a good life. Isn't that what we all want? To be able to look back at our life and know that we did everything we could to live our healthiest, happiest, most vibrant life. It's why we work so hard and fight so passionately to make time for those things that we feel are going to impact that the most. We all do our best to eat well and to exercise regularly. I and mean, the fact that you're listening to this message is a testament to your commitment to that. But what if there was more? What if today you could have the hindsight of your future self? What if that future self could tell you the secret to happiness? What if that future self could tell you what really the secret to longevity to mental and physical well-being, to brain sharpness as you age. What if he knew all of that today? Would you want to know? Listen up. The secret is out, and it has been driven by this amazing study. There's a man named Robert Waldinger. This fellow is a psychologist. He's a Zen priest. And most relevantly to this discussion, he's the fourth director of the Harvard study of adult development. This is the longest longitudinal study in history on happiness. The idea to study a large group of people over the course of their lifetime to understand what they learned about these people and in the end, what did those that were healthiest and happiest have in common? So nearly 80 years ago, this study started tracking the lives of 724 men. Year after year, decade after decade, this study extensively interviewed these subjects. They didn't just rely on questionnaires. They actually sat in their living rooms, understood what was going on with their families, what was going on with work, what was going on with their lifestyle, all those things. And to really get a sense of their mental and physical kind of health, they even, believe it or not, review medical records and even brain scans of all these subjects. All participants started in 1938, and they were in their late teens. And a third of them were Harvard students. In fact, I understand one was even JFK. The other were boys from Boston's poorest neighborhoods, chosen because they were from some of the most disadvantaged and troubled kind of um, families in Boston. And all were boys because Harvard was all male at the time. Today, there are about 19 men who still remain in the study, well into their 90s, of course. And now, believe it or not, this study has continued by tracking the over 2,000 children of this original group of men. Um, so what did they learn? What makes for a good life? What is the factor that contributed most significantly to health and happiness? Do you think it was their economic situation, their income, their education, the way they were, their parents were, their notoriety, their travel experiences, what they did for work? None of that. The single most important factor to health and happiness was good relationships. That's right, good relationships. We know tending to your body, doing our best to eat well and exercise regularly is essential. But guess what? Your relationships are a form of self-care too. Cl close relationships actually protect our, us from mental and physical declines. And it turns out that close relationships are better predictors of happiness than social class, IQ, even genes. And this was found to be true among both the Harvard men and the inner city participants. The study found three things. First, social connections are good for us and loneliness is bad. In fact, loneliness kills. Those who are more socially connected to family, to friends, to their communities were happier, healthier, and live longer. Those who are more isolated and were, were found to be less happy, their health declines faster in midlife, and frankly, they just, they just died sooner. Secondly, it's not just having social connections, it's the quality of those connections that matter most. So living in the midst of conflict of any time, of any kind, bad, right? That, 
conflict is bad, no matter what what is that? Um, living in the midst of warm, supportive relationships is actually protective. In fact, when the study looked retrospectively at participants, they looked at those in the 80s and said, what did they have most common in their 50s? The single most predictive factor of health and happiness in their 80s was that these folks had strong, close, quality relationships when they were in their 50s. So again, those that were healthiest in their 80s had strong quality relationships when they were in their 50s. I thought that was really interesting. The third thing the study uncovered, good relationships don't just protect our bodies, they protect our brains. It turns out that being in a securely attached relationship when you are in your 80s is protective. That people in those relationships felt like they could count on the other person. And those that had that, their memory stayed sharper longer. Conversely, those that were not in, in solid, supportive relationships where they could count on another person, their experience, they experienced memory declines earlier. And by the way, those that were in the good relationships, they had, they had people in the study that bickered day to day and all those things. And in the end, it didn't matter. It was really when the times got tough, were they able to have somebody that they could count on to support them? And if the answer was yes, that was the most predictive factor. So what's the message? Many of us sacrifice time, the time we invest in the relationships with those we care for the most because we feel our responsibility to them is to work harder, to make more money, um, to working longer, right? We think we're doing a service to them by working harder and working longer, but when we take our time away from those that we love the most and stop nurturing those relationships with those that we love the most, we are actually doing something that's frankly bad for our health. Yes, we have to eat well. Yes, we have to exercise regularly. But we also have to devote time to nurturing and developing the relationships that matter the most. And this is not about quantity. This is about quality. So how are you spending your time? If you're like me, you're working too hard and you're spending not enough time with those you love the most. So at this moment, Consider yourself as I consider myself enlightened. As if you've just received a message from your future self. A gift, really. Now the big question is, what are you going to do with it? Here's to living your best life.